good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Hamlin Gold presentation. So, as Chrissy said, uh, next month we celebrate our first birthday. There will be no fairy bread, but there will be a great celebration of a fantastic first year. Uh, we're exploring the, um, our large belt scale gold opportunity in the far northeast of Western Australia in the Tanami Goldfield. We've got a, uh, built ourselves a great exploration team. We've well cashed up, as Chrissy mentioned. And what I wanted to do today is basically share with you a bit of our exploration strategy and some of the early exceptional results we've been seeing from that program. The board, myself, a uh, geologist with 30 years experience, joined with uh, Justin Osborne, another geologist, and along with Clayton Davies, an experienced exploration manager. We have about 85 years of industry experience, which makes me feel very old all of a sudden. Um, right from project generation through to mine development and production. Joining us on the board, Philip Crutchfield is a King's Council based in uh, Melbourne with extensive corporate law experience, and Will Robinson, the ex-president uh, of AMEC, and a commercial background, so a really well-balanced board. We have a very simple capital structure uh, as of the June quarterly, uh, 7.1 in the bank. Importantly, our shareholder base is very, is very tight, top uh, 20 hold near on 60% of the stock, and that includes two key investors, uh, Goldfields uh, and Silver Lake, both taking 10% interest in the IPO. So where we're located, a bit of a, an introduction slide. We are right on the Northern Territory WA border. Uh, our le lease holdings are all in Western Australia. On the Northern Territory side, and a lot of you may not know much about the Tanami Goldfield, it's kind of a, a bit of a hidden gem, but I want to tell you a little bit more about uh, this area and why we think the prize is so significant. So there's some big boys in the room up there. Um, Newmont in blue there, and the sort of mustardy, yellowy colour, uh, Northern Star in joint venture with Tanami Gold. On the West Australian side, made up of uh, pretty newcomers, including, including us. PVW and Killy to our north, and the most recent uh, company to join us up there is uh, Black Cat Syndicate, who purchased the Coyote Gold Mine from uh, Northern Star just earlier this year. So the area on the west side of the border, um, generally yeah, newcomers. We've all been very busy this year. Uh, I was up there only a few months ago, and there were five rigs in the field drilling away for those four companies. Probably the most active exploration this area has ever seen since gold was first discovered in the uh, early 1980s. There's a real boom going on there. We're actually all benefiting from each other, working side by side, and uh, we'll see some really interesting results come out of this district, both for gold and rare earths up there in the, uh, in the north of WA. Using that same footprint and looking at the geology of the area, state borders don't change geology. The Tanami Goldfield extends from over about 300 kilometres of strike from the bottom uh, right there to the top left. We hold about 100 strike kilometres of that corridor. And the important point here is geology is the same, key structures are the same, the geological setting of the deposits is very much the same. What you see though in the Northern Territory over 25 million ounces of endowment, on the West Australian side less than 1 million. And that really comes down to a lack of exploration, exploration immaturity. And that's what we see as a, as a great opportunity up here. Previously the Tanami would be known as a probably still is by some as a difficult, remote, hard place to operate. We're talking about desert sands. We don't have the outcrop Tony has to deal with, which is uh, kind of uh, a blessing for us. We believe that's where you could hide a significant gold system. And some of the results I'll show you today will point towards that. But it's, as I mentioned, it's starting to get some real focus. So we expect to see the pendulum of ounces add to the left-hand side over the, the next few years. But I want to spend a bit of time talking about Newmont's I've obviously pressed that just a few two times, a few many times. Some of you might not know much about the Calais operation. Um, so held by Newmont, the world's largest gold mining company. This is the lowest cost gold production in their entire portfolio across the globe. It's an absolute cracking deposit. It hasn't always had the greatest of, of lives, but more recently, the last 10 years, this deposit just goes from strength to strength. They're producing half a million ounces per annum. They're going up to 700,000. They got production going out to 2040. And that's because they sort of un have begun to understand over the last 10 years the magnitude of this deposit and how to explore and find more gold. But from an explorer point of view, when we come to a new area, we don't want to relearn the mistakes of the past, and we certainly want to learn the, the things that have been positive and got them into these discoveries. So just two very simple diagrams up in the top right there. What we're showing there is just what would happen if you drilled shallow 
geochem exploration holes over a world-class deposit. And what you can see there, very poorly, I'll give you that, is basically a two kilometre long 0.1 gram per tonne maximum gold in hole anomaly. And this is quite subtle. It's not a significant uh, anomaly. And in fact, only one hole of the early vacuum drilling went above one gram per tonne. So this is a shallow drilling gets you into the ballpark. It doesn't find you the high grade gold shoot. What we also see in the bottom slide there is a, is a cartoon of, the inter of a planned view of the, of the high grade gold shoots at Cali. And what it is there is basically a simple intersection of the folded stratigraphy and the key uh, mineralizing structures. And that intersection produces a series of shoot-like plunging parallel gold shoots. The story here is once you get onto one, and I think Cali was produced for many years following the one ore body, working out and understanding that and exploring laterally found multiple parallel gold loads. And that's been the real change from a, a single shoot type deposit into, a, into the behemoth it is now. So we want to learn about on our ground, with where we are exploring it currently, we have essentially drilling very similar to that top page. Broad, shallow drilling, and seeing the sort of anomalies that these guys had right in the early days. What am I pressing now? Back button. Back button, right. Okay. So, to learn a bit about the, the regolith, we went to the Coyote Pit and looked over the side of it. Thanks very much, Gareth, for the uh, look over the wall. And what we see there is a typical profile of the sort of near surface geology we're seeing in, in the, in the Tanami district. We have a very clear layer of cover, very little gold. This is desert sands and, and basically benign material. You get some gold dispersion in this area, but not a lot. Below that, there's a very distinct uh, leached zone. And the leached zone is named uniquely because metals are leached out of that area. And you tend to, you see that broad low grade plume but it's very, very hard. You don't get any enrichment and you don't see a great deal of, of gold dispersion, but you get, you get into that sort of ballpark. Occasionally, you get a high-grade load that will poke through that leach zone, and uh, I'll talk a bit about that later on. But all our exploration, or 70% of the holes we've inherited are less than 10 metres deep. So most of them sit in that leach zone or, and just poking through cover. So all we'd expect to see is broad, low-grade anomalism at this point in time. And when you look at our lease holding, now just to give you back into scale here, top left to bottom right is 100 kilometres of strike. So this is a huge land holding, 2,500 square k's. But that same threshold, colour coding all the holes in the, in the near surface by 0.1 gram per tonne or above, we outline a series of multi-kilometre long gold anomalies. The Fremlin's anomaly just in the far east there is six kilometres long. The one in the middle, Hutch's Fine, 2.5 kilometres. There's a bit of a scale. So these are the sort of early stage, large scale plumes that you'd see if you're exploring for this district for these orogenic sediment hosted gold deposits. So in our first year, our idea was to get drilling across as many of these as we could. Most of it was focused on trying to do deep diamond drilling to understand the structural and geological architecture. What we did is, uh, and also one of the other programs we looked at is to try and understand the regolith by doing a series of sections of shallow RC drilling. I can only talk about two because I've only got assays back for two. The ASX doesn't like talking about uh, things I think that's in there. So the two, two projects we're going to talk about today is Hutches and Camel. Uh, these are sort of end members of the two types of projects we've got. One we focused on the regolith and one we focused on deep diamond drilling. So the Camel project is, this is a magnetic image over about a two and a half K area. It's a two kilometre long gold anomaly at surface in that low level footprint. We did one single line of drilling, two diamond holes and a few RC holes. What we focused on here is trying to understand the orientation of these key mineralised structures. Hole five, which is the second one from the bottom there, was very successful at that. We intersected a suite of high grade quartz vein dolerite hosted uh, gold loads, gold, gold structures. And from that was very important being orientated. We, un we outlined and identified a northwest corridor from that drilling. Our holes sort of look like they're sitting on the side of that or the edge of that sort of system. And we, we projected or put a, an idea of a, a corridor of high grade or potential for high grade mineralisation. When we went out there on the ground, um, when we did the drilling, we realised that this isn't all covered. There is actually rock sticking out of the ground about, by about a centimetre. What we see out here is a lot of sand, but these quartz veins seem to sit right at surface. And if you walk over them, you might, you might be lucky in seeing a few. What we did is got a a drone in the air did a detailed drone photography and mapped out many hundreds of these veins, sampled a number of them, about 75 or so, 
And interestingly, the ones with braid in it sat within our yellow box. It confirmed that original interpretation of a northwest corridor. We're seeing surface samples here going up to 23 grams per tonne off the deck. Strangely, again, no one's ever done this sampling before, which is kind of weird. So we're very excited about this little area. We think that we've got that 2K area down to maybe a 600 metre area, and we're planning follow-up drilling here in the very short term. So quite excited about that. What we, the second project I want to talk about, which is hot off the press from results last week, is a Hutch's find. Now, this is a, a bit of a story of, of interest. I'll see if I can get the pointer to work. So we did one line of drilling right across the, uh, a small area of the project, again, about a 2.5K long uh, project. That map looks like it's drilled to death. Like, it looks like those little dots are basically drill holes, and they're colour-coded by the maximum gold in hole. And what you see is three sort of semi-northwest trending corridors. A lot of those holes are five, ten metres deep, so very shallow. But it has outlined areas of gold mineralisation, and a couple of these have been followed up with deeper drilling. So what we did is we did a test to say, well, let's try and see if we can take surface samples to try and see the gold under this shallow sand cover. So we picked an area. They are also geochem sample locations, but we also then followed up with RC drilling to try and see where the gold was dispersing in those layers that we looked at in the photograph of the open pit. So we started from background. We thought there was no gold in the west, and we'd go across the anomaly, we'd see a peak in the gold, and then we'd see back into background. Well, Mother Nature didn't read the script on this little story, and we intersected 12 metres at 4.5 grams from 6 metres below surface in an area where the shallow drilling had failed to see any great significant amount of anomalism. So two things we learnt from this. The post-hole shallow drilling is largely ineffective at finding high-grade gold systems. And also, we can find very mineable, very high-grade material within very shallow depths from surface. So this is an outstanding result from us. And it really opens up, just on even this page, a huge area where we might be able to identify previously unknown high-grade mineralisation. So if our soil geochemical orientations, and we're using we're using a number of methodologies to try and see through the sand, including the, the CSIRO developed fine fraction soils. We're also looking at multiple fraction soils. But if we can possibly see through the sand and see these high grade veins, we'll be, ex be able to accelerate from discovery to potentially answers very quickly. And just to show that section, these are 100 metre spaced holes, so we really were pretty broad in our drilling. This vein has, is open, uh, obviously down dip and a long strike. Drilling starts again, so we got these results on, uh, issued them on Monday last week. Planning this week, we're drilling again next week. So we've managed to get a rig, managed to get a loader, managed to get the TOs organised, and we're going to be out here drilling next week. So we're super excited by this. We could turn this with a, basically a two days of drilling. We could have another section uh, and drilling down dip of this, and if we can get a few pierce points onto it, we might be onto the top of a gold system. Already, as you can see, to the east, 200 metres away, Another 10 at 5 sitting there from previous drillers, previous explorers. Gets the idea that we're starting to build up maybe a high-grade gold system here. So lots of results coming out from our previous diamond drilling over the next six months. This will be the catalyst and the, and the springboard for our, tw for our second year program. But first year we've been extremely excited and we wait, can't wait for what second year brings. We believe we've got all the hallmarks of a successful junior explorer. We're well supported on the market, we're well supported uh, with a great management and a board team. We've got the money in the bank and we're uh, very, very keen to get on the ground and, and continue our exploration efforts. And if we can continue to get the sort of results we've seen more recently, I think we'll be a very different beast uh, very quickly. So if you'd like to know more about Hamlin Gold, uh, please feel free to come out to the outside tent and catch up with us or follow us online. Uh, I will finish with a little anecdote because I like stories. But um, our front page of our annual report is, uh, is graced by my son who, um, I've decided breeding your own field team is better than actually trying to get them on the market. So I've, uh, I took this young fella out in the bush ten, when he was 10 years old and now uh, 15 years later he's going to do his honours next year on our, our project and um, yeah, it's really great to share the experience with him. So all the best and uh, thanks very much for listening to Hammond Gold.